Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kino and we're here in the design world today and I'm going to show you how to build a really simple automatic water bottle filling station. Now this is my own design, completely my own design. I spent a lot of time on this to ensure that it does work on both Bedrock and on Java. This is Java I'm building it in today, but I use these in my survival world in Bedrock. And they're fantastic. And this is a really great system because not only does it automatically fill the water bottles, but I've also put an automatic locking system at the bottom there so that when the chest is full of water bottles, the whole system shuts down. So there's not constantly clicking and we're not wasting glass bottles that despawn because they're coming out of the dispensers. So if you've got any questions or comments or you would like to make any improvements, please do drop it in the comments below. If you learn anything, do like, follow, share and catch up with my main channel because we're doing some great things over in our survival world. And I've got lots and lots of tutorials like this, like the mud farm we built the other day. But without further ado, let's jump into this and crack on because it's really, really useful. So this is all the things that we'll need. We'll obviously need some empty water bottles to fill up. We'll need a water bucket to make water source, some hoppers, a redstone torch, some trapdoors. There can be any types of trapdoors. One singular slab it can be any slab you like. Some redstone dust, dispensers, levers, sticky pistons, any form of block whatsoever, an observer or two, some redstone comparators, and some chests. And this is very very simple so to start with we're going to place chests on the floor like so then we're going to need the hopper on top of it leading into it like so on top of here we're going to need to make a water source now the easiest way of doing that to start with is to actually put a block on here so that we can get the trap doors on the side like so that's so that we don't have to keep sitting down when we break that there we're then going to have the water source inside of here to start with first of all though we do need to put our dropper so i've put that one there just temporary and i'm actually going to put one just there like so and then what we can do whilst we're up here we can also put our water source in like so Then from the top here, just stand on top of this so that we can we can crouch down again. We're going to want a hopper going into this. It can go on the side, uh, but I'm just going to put it on top for now. And we're going to want a chest or a double chest leading into that. And last but not least, we're going to need a slab there. What's going to happen is, when we get rid of this, this dispenser is going to have the glass bottles in. You can fill this up with as many glass bottles as you want. This dispenser will have the glass bottles in shoot them into the water source the hopper will then take the filled glass bottles and lead them into there then around the back here we're going to make a really simple comparator clock and we're going to do that by putting a three by three platform get any blocks you want it could even be slabs just any sort of three by three platform on there so nine blocks and this system's really good. I've got these in my world all over the place. And the way that they work is the comparator powers the circuit. As soon as there is a single item in there, which is why this is brilliant, this one, because it doesn't need to be full up. It doesn't have to depend on how many items are in there. It will work on a singular item. The comparator will set this circuit off and it will set it off because we're going to put an observer, uh, sorry, a sticky piston there. Now, as soon as we put an item in there, this sticky piston will extend. Here, we're going to put an observer, and then we're also going to put another observer in like that, and we're just going to run a circuit back into this. So, as you can see, when we put an item in there, and I will show you, uh, let's put uh, a trapdoor in there. That extends, that then powers the redstone at the back, which then powers itself. So, anything that drops in there shoots straight out. And in here, we should have trapdoor. Now, I can also show you in the here, let's show you with a single glass bottle. So that pops out there, that then powers that, drops it into here, shoots into there, which then comes down here, and we now have a filled water bottle, which is exactly what we need. 
So the next thing we need to do, now that we know that's going to work, is we need a way to switch it off. Because what will happen is, we'll have lots of water bottles in there, which are stackable 64. The water bottles, once they're filled, aren't stackable. So the 64 in there is going to fill this up very, very quickly. Plus, if we have more than one stack of those, this is going to be very, very full. If this is still going, which it will be, because there'll be items in there which will turn the circuit on... This will just overflow with filled water bottles and you'll be wasting the glass as they'll just despawn at some point. So we need a way to deactivate this automatically when this chest is full. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to put a comparator on here. Now because this is a double chest, one comparator won't actually power the circuit we need. The reason being is because it will only measure the one, so it won't wait until it's completely full. It'll only wait till it's half full, which is not what we want. So the way that we do that is very, very simple. We override it just by putting a lever in and adding some power to it. Once we switch that on, it just means that now that is going to wait until that's completely full. Then what we need to do, over this side here, we're going to build out two blocks next to this observer. And we're going to place one more sticky piston just in here. Now this sticky piston is going to be activated by a redstone torch, which we'll place next to it, just there. Now as you can see, when that redstone torch is on, that powers the sticky piston, which puts the observer in place so that we can complete the circuit. If there isn't any power on this redstone torch, take it away, that takes the observer out. So even if this is moving, which it will do because that will be completely full, so this will be extended, no more water bottles can be produced because that's not in the circuit. And the way that we switch it off is really, really simple. All we need to do is just from that comparator, we're just going to run a line of redstone into there now at the moment there's no power to that redstone so that torch is on which has powered this which completes the circuit once this fills up that comparator will power this redstone with 12 i believe which will turn that torch off thus making the circuit incomplete and we can test that we can test it really easy by putting in These. And what's happening now is, as you can see, this circuit is complete. The comparator's measuring that there's something in there, which are the water bottles dropping out of here. As the water bottles are in there, this pushes the observer out here, which then in turn looks into that observer, creating an observer clock. This observer clock then completes this, forcing the water bottles into here. Once this is full, which it has now, the comparator then picks up the power from that, runs this round to the back and switches this off, thus making the circuit incomplete. This is still extended because we still have items in here and that's going to be filled up with the glass bottles that we put in there. So there's still items in there, so that's going to be extended ready to go. If we were to take these items out, that unextends and there's no circuit there anyway so even if that was full or not full let's go with not full let's take these out so it's not full as you can see that's extended now and that's how the circuit works it's really really simple but also really clever what we can do is we can take this and you can fill this up with as many as you want like this that completes the circuit and that's just going to fill these up at the bottom here as soon as that's full, the circuit's complete, which turns that off, and that is all done. And we've got as many water bottles as you can have. You can have this going into a chest, or you can have it going into your potion system, which is what I've done. You can also have it going into a mud farm, which we built the other day over there. Um, you don't need it in the mud farm, because the mud farm automatically produces water uh, in a constant circle. But that's really it's great it's probably best for the potion farms but it's just a fantastic system always having water bottles available